Hey there, this is Stan, K9SWX, and today we're going to be talking about tracking weather balloons. So right now I have a website pulled up called Sonda Hub, and it is a kind of a hobbyist website that tracks weather balloons all over the world. And as you can see, we are probably just about an hour after a lot of these have launched. And you can see all over the world, a lot of the U.S. obviously, and Europe, and even down here, down here in Antarctica, there is a weather balloon being tracked. <laughs> you can see it moving along the coast here, which is pretty cool. But basically, uh, let me zoom out here. But basically, um, I'm going to focus on the U.S. here. Um, as you can see, most of the sites here have balloons up. So every day, weather balloons are launched from various National Weather Service offices, airports, and even some universities uh, will launch weather balloons. Um, usually twice a day, once in the morning, once in the after, uh, once in the evening. Uh, here right now at the time of the recording, um, they launch, uh, we're on standard time, so they launch at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. And uh, we're, we're just about at the 6 p.m. hour here. So this balloon has been up about an hour from uh, Lincoln, Illinois. The Lincoln Weather Office has launched one. And it is going just north of my location here in Champaign. Um, but usually they're, they're twice a day. They, they put them up twice a day. Unless um, hurricane season, sometimes they will uh, launch three or four times a day to help feed the weather models um, crucial data to predict where a hurricane might go. Um, it's also used um, in the, you know, in the U.S. during severe weather season. Uh, if they're predicting, you know, if the ingredients look good for, you know, tornadoes, large hail, damaging winds, all that stuff, they will launch. Um, usually they'll launch in the morning and then around noon or early afternoon they'll put up another balloon um, just to see how conditions have changed versus what the models were showing. So what what is a weather balloon? Basically it's a balloon tied to a instrument package called a radio sonde. Um, it has sensors on board that measure temperature, humidity, uh, pressure, and you know wind speed at various heights as, as the balloon goes up into the atmosphere. Um, it also has a GPS on board with a radio transmitter that sends that data back to the National Weather Service and lets them feed that data into the weather models, the forecast models. Uh, the great thing about this is anybody can pick up the signal and there's uh, software out there to let you do that. Okay, so to get started, basically you need a Raspberry Pi like this. This is the Pi 4. Um, you can use older Pis. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going lower than a Pi 3. Um, you, it does work on a Pi 1 or 2. I have tried it, but it's very, it's kind of slow. And that needs to be the only thing running on that Pi. But I would stick with a 4 or even a, I think the 5s are out now, so you can get a 5 if you want. Um, and I'm for the receiver, I'm using this RTL uh, SDR V3 model. Uh, you can get those on Amazon. And the antenna, now this is the antenna that comes with the SDR. It's just a little telescopic um, antenna that you can use on all kinds of things. Um, I wouldn't recommend that if you're wanting to do this full time on this, you know, want to run a 24-7 balloon tracker. Getting started, it's fine. Uh, what I would actually recommend is going to uh, n9taxlabs.com. And this guy builds a lot of ham antennas and GMRS and all kinds of antennas. They're basically called Slim Jim antennas. And what I did is I went to this particular one, the single band Slim Jim. Uh, I think mine's a, I think I got the 16 foot cable. But um, if you want to hook it up to the SDR, you get the SMA mail for the connector and then you pick your cable length we'll just go 16 foot and then you want to click this custom tuning box and then what I did is I cut it for the actual frequency that our local weather office uses which is 
405.010. Now what you want to do probably, A, find out what frequency your local weather office uses for their balloons most often. Now they, they don't always stay the same, but um, normally they, you know, they use the same one day after day. But I would find find that frequency and either have um, have him cut custom tune this to that frequency or since we're only covering six megahertz you could put in 403 megahertz and you know it's going to cover the whole balloon you know the 400 to 406 range so that's probably the best way to do it just do the 403 and then um, if you're going to this is going inside probably or I guess you could do it outside I'm not sure what the weather limitations are on this antenna but I use it inside but I just go ahead and get this little hook uh, just it makes it easy to clip hang on to things and if you're going to do a PVC pole you can add that too but I didn't do that and it's not too bad um, 35 bucks plus shipping so you know not too shabby and it works really well. It works a lot better than he also has a dual band ham antenna. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's this one. It works a lot better for this purpose than this antenna. But this, if you are looking for a ham antenna, this is a great starter right here. A 2 meter and 70 centimeter. But anyway, um, that's just a, one idea. I mean, you can make your own. You can you know use whatever you got but it's it should cover 400 to 406 and then for the software um, if you're using the Pi 3, Pi 4, Pi 5 I would recommend the Raspberry Pi 64 bit and the one I use is the Pi OS Lite which does not have a desktop interface but most people probably will go with the OS with desktop interface just because you can plug it into a monitor or television and use it kind of like a regular computer but mine kind of sits in the corner does its thing I don't need a comp I don't need a monitor plugged into it I remote into it and uh, I'm not going to go through setting it all up in this video because I have another video which I'll link in the card and in the description that shows you how to set this up from scratch and that's what uh, I'm assuming you are working with or you already have a Pi set up and you're just installing this software that we're going to install coming up. All right, so the first thing we need to do is download this RadioSond Auto RX software. And I will put the link to this in the description. Uh, it's basically a, a project on GitHub if you're familiar with that. But um, you go to that website and then um, go ahead and connect to your Pi, whether you are using a keyboard and monitor or you are SSH, SSHing into it like I am. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to mine. So now I'm connected. And we're going to scroll down here in the directions here. I'm going to go down here to step 4, or 4.1 really. And these are the steps we're going to do. So we're going to do the sudo app get update. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Oops. And then it's going to make sure I have the latest updates before I go through all the installation. Okay. I'll go ahead and do this just to make sure. Upgrade. And I do have a few to upgrade, so I'm going to go ahead and let it run. All right, now that that's done, we're going to copy this big, long list of programs that we need to install before we get to the main event here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. This might take a little while. Some of these may already be installed. Just go ahead and hit yes when it asks you to continue. All right, those are all installed. So let's go down here. Um, if you are running Raspbian Bookworm like I am, uh, it's probably a good idea to run this, these two commands. So let me go ahead and do that. If you're not, if you're on an older version, you don't probably have to run that. So let me go ahead and do that. 
looks like I already have the latest. Um, we'll go ahead and run this. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and reboot. I just do sudo reboot. That usually does it. And uh, we'll ping it and see when it comes back up. All right, we're getting pings again, so let's go ahead and connect. All right, so that was kind of the the preparation for before we install the software. But we still need to install the SDR drivers or software, if you will. Um, there's a few um, warnings here. Um, I am not running version 4 of my SDR. I'm running version 3. But I'm going to go ahead and skip this part we're going to come down here and install it from source um, because it usually it will sometimes run a little better and we'll have to do less stuff. So let's just go here. So we're going to run this git clone software. All right, we got that. And we're going to do this cd lib rtl str going to make directory build, cd build, and then we're going to copy this big long command into here, and this will take a little bit. Oh, okay, that was quick. <laughs> and then we will sudo make install. This will actually install it into the system. And if you're installing this on a, a Pi that already has the RTL SDR stuff and already on it, you don't you don't have to do this step. So um, just if I'm kind of doing this as a fresh install. All right, and then we'll run the sudo ld config. All right, so let's scroll down here. Now it says if we did it from source, this file should already exist. So let's go ahead and check and see if this file is here. Well, it is not there, so <laughs> I'm glad we checked. Uh, let's go ahead and copy all this into here. You got to do a control X, yes to save and just hit enter. And now it wants us to reboot the Pi, so we're going to do a sudo reboot. And we're going to ping it and wait for it to come back up. All right, so where it's coming back up, so we'll go ahead and remote back in or log in, whichever way you're connected. All right, so now we're going to scroll down a little bit. It says it wants us to run this test, so we're going to run RTL underscore test. And there we go. It sees our SDR right here, real tech. And there's a serial number. Yours may be different if you've renamed it or something, but it shows you a little bit about it. it shows the gain values, and now it's just kind of running some tests, which it looks like it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to hit a Control C to get out of that. And now we get to the good stuff. This is where we actually install the Radiosond software. So we're going to copy this. And make sure when you're copying this, don't include these dollar signs. They're just showing that as the prompt. So everything after that you want to copy. So we're going to paste that in here. And this, what this will do is download the whole project into a subfolder. And then we're going to jump into the, we're going to CD into Radiosond underscore auto underscore RX slash auto RX. And we're going to run the build script. This might take a little bit. All right, so now it's done. And then we're going to copy the station file into 
that's an example file, into its own. And this is the one we're going to edit. So, let's see. Here we might want to check out the configuration settings. That link there. Um, yeah, now if you're in the U.S., you want to use this range. Europe and Australia has different frequency ranges. Um, so we're going to scroll down here. And, you know, you shouldn't have to change too much here. Um, if you're using an RTLSDR, you can leave that alone. You can leave that alone. Don't have to mess with that. Okay, here's our SDR. Um, if you happen to have more than one um, SDR on your Raspberry Pi, you might want to um, do a serial number versus index. Uh, but I'm not going to cover that here, so um, we're going to keep scrolling. SDR. And if you got another SDR, you can put it in there as well. Okay, here's our search parameters. So our minimum, they have this set up. It looks like it defaults to the Australian frequencies, which uh, won't help us in the U.S. So we're going to do, we're going to leave the minimum freak the same, 400.05. And we're going to change the max freak to 406. Oops. So we'll change that. Now, if you are in an area that's using the higher, you know, 1600 megahertz balloons, then you have to change it accordingly. But I'm going with the 400 megahertz ones. So um, you can leave the timeout alone. Now, these um, here, only scan, never scan, and always scan, uh, these are going to be dependent on your area and any kind of noise you have because... On mine, I have a couple of um, local noise that just happens to fall on some of these frequencies. So what I do is I put never scan those. And you can put the list of frequencies in there um, followed. Let's see. I think you can just put a comma in there. But um, what I like to do, if you know that the the frequency of your closest radio sound doesn't change. You can um, put that on the always scan. So like mine is 405.010. So regardless, whatever else it picks up, it's always going to scan that frequency. So that's, that's something that you may need to do. Um, and then if there's other, like again, you can do the never scan or if you only want to scan for that one balloon, that's great. But uh, oftentimes they will change them or you might get one from another area that floats into your coverage area that's on a different frequency. Like um, for me, th this 405010 is our Lincoln, Illinois. Um, that's usually what that is. But the, we have one in Davenport, Iowa that sometimes comes down this way. And it's on like 403.610 megahertz, somewhere around there. So that may be another one you would want to put in here. And you can do, I think it's 610, and then just put a comma in between. So it's regardless of what else it finds when it does its scan, it's always going to scan those two frequencies. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, we don't have to mess with that. Uh, you might want to put in your latitude, longitude, and altitude. That way you show up on the map. Um, and it would help others when you, when you show up on, or if you send your data to, um, the websites like, uh, Sonda Hub and the Radio Sonda Tracker websites, you know, it would be useful for them to know where your station is located. So you can you can get that information. And then that's if you've got a GPS plugged in. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, okay, so here is where you upload your data to uh, the Sonda Hub website. So first of all, you'd have to change your 
your call sign or yeah if you if you're a ham and you if you uh, want to just use your call sign you can do that I've already using that on another pi so I'm not I'm just gonna put my call sign or something but I wouldn't actually do that but you just put in your call sign or something that's unique and then if you want to upload it you can keep this at true I would recommend doing that if you don't that's fine just change it to false um, then you can put in the type of antenna you have if you're using the they they describe a, a quarter wave monopole on the website if you want to build one of those or if you're using a ham antenna just put that in there um, just leave that to true and then leave you know every 15 seconds is fine and you probably want to put in your email address here now this one the next section here is to upload to the other website the radiosondi.info site now a few versions ago they used to you used to be able to take this data and put it into the APRS system and uh, anybody that go to like APRS.fi could see not only ham stations on the map but they could see weather balloons so that's pretty cool but I think it kind of overwhelmed the network um, so they decided to not feed the data into that system anymore but this data does go into the radiosondi.info site so if you want to do that you can change this to true and then you can put in your call sign and if you've got multiple APR stations you can do like you know the SSID stuff where you put no call dash five or whatever um, and then you will need your your passcode which you can get at the website that they list here it's not showing on my screen because I got it a little small but okay and then you can probably leave all this alone and we'll scroll down that all looks good I think that's it for that and we don't need to mess with any of that. Okay, email. Now what I like is if you've got this running 24-7, you can have this thing, any anytime it detects the, like the serial number of the balloon, it'll send you an email with a link and you click on the link and it takes you to the, I think it takes you to the Sandy Hub website where you can, you can track the balloon. So as soon as it, as soon as that first detection, you get that email. So you would set, email enabled to true oops and then you want launch notifications and if and when it lands if it's close by um, and then you can set your you'll get a landing notification if it's within so many they've got it set to kilometers but you know if you want to say hey there's one within 10 mile or 10 kilometers I'm going to go check it out, you know, that you can set that as well. And then you can set all this stuff. If there's any errors, you could set that to true. And then you can put in your email server information here. I'm not going to mess with that right now. And then, you know, you got to put in your to field where you want it to go. And then I just leave that all the same there. And then the rest of this is if you've got a rotator, you can hook that up. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, logging, yeah, you probably want logs. And then web interface should be okay, leaving it this way. Um, and then that's the port you'll do. And I'll show you this in a minute when we connect to it. Um, all right. You probably want to set a password. Let me hold on a minute. Yeah, I mean, you could you could set the web control to true and then put in a password and then you could control it. That's fine. That's more if you're going to put it on the web, I think. But this will be mainly for your local use. Um, don't really need to do anything with the rest of this. And again, once you get this set up, you can tweak it if you need to. But the rest of this, you really don't have to mess with. 
So I'm going to, that's the end of that. I'm going to go ahead and save it, which is control X and then hit yes. And then station.cfg. All right. I'm going to go back. Oops. All right. I'm going to go back to here. All right, so after that's done, we're going to run. We're already in that same folder, so I don't need to run this first command here. We're going to run this Python command. Paste that in there. All right, and we're going to run this one. And then we're going to install... All right, and then we're going, we're still in that folder, so we don't need to run that. We're going to go ahead and run this activate command. Paste that in. All right. So now that's running. So now while we're still in this view, we're going to go ahead and run the actual program. Okay, so here comes, we can see it's loading. That's the version. Now it's going to run a frequency scan. So we know it's it's starting to work. I'll just let it run here for a second. Now it's way past the time to pick up um, any frequencies. Plus I don't even have any antenna plugged into this test one. So <laughs> um, it's definitely... Here's the uh, two frequencies we put in earlier, the 40361 and the 40501. And then apparently it picked up 403.2. It's probably a noise source, but I'm just going to control C out of that. So what we really need to do now is set it up so it automatically runs. When you turn the Pi on, it will automatically start scanning for balloons. So we're going to copy that command in there. But make sure you are in the right folder. <laughs> okay, we've copied that. Now we're going to take a look at it and make sure that everything looks good. Again, if you're using a different username than Pi, then you'll have to change some of this. I think it looks okay. So I'm going to control X out of that. And what we need to do is now is enable that service. I'm going to use that command. And then we need to start the service. So it should be running. So now we're going to run this command to check the status. And we should start seeing the log like we did before. This is a better view here if we run this command. That way you can see the log at, in real time. So yeah, now we're back to, um, these are the two frequencies that we had programmed in that we always wanted it to scan. And this is one at just some noise source locally here. So if we reboot this, or let me cancel out of this. Um, should be able to see that this is running. It uses this RTL power command. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and reboot this just to make sure that this will automatically come back, that it automatically comes back up when it boots up. All right, so it's coming back up. Let's go ahead and log back in. We'll run that. Don't see it. There it goes. Okay. And you can also run that journal thing. And it's looks like it's coming back up. A couple little errors there, but that was should be okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to load that 
URL into our browser. So I'm going to put in my IP address of this Pi, which for me is 10.0.0.67, and then a colon, and then which is the port, which is 5000. So let's see if this loads, and it does. So, yeah, I did. <laughs> now, if you don't put your latitude and longitude in, this is where it puts you. So you probably don't want to leave it there. Um, but anyway, um, this is what your interface will look like. And if you could go over here to this gear icon, you can see the settings. And this show scan plot is going to be important because here you can see <laughs> I have some sort of noise source that's super loud on that 403.2 megahertz and I don't even have an antenna plugged in so and these other two red dot orange dots are the ones that I told that I always wanted it to scan but obviously no antenna and it's way past the time that it would be usually in the area so um, that is what the interface looks like and this other icon is for historical stuff so obviously I just set this up so this one doesn't have any but that is about it for setting it up and I will show you um, what it looks like when you do start getting data and when it first detects uh, a balloon within you know your coverage area so if you want to get an idea of how many balloons there are uh, you can go to a site uh, called sondahub.org, and this is um, all the sites here. I mean, it, it goes worldwide, but I'm going to focus on the U.S. here. And all these little circles are launch sites, whether they're National Weather Service, uh, some of them are universities and airports, but not every office has one, so... I'm going to zoom in here to Illinois, and there's one kind of in the Quad Cities area over here in Davenport, Iowa, which is right on the border of uh, Illinois and Iowa. And then the one I'm focused on here is the one in Lincoln, Illinois. And we're just after 5 p.m. local time, so um, any minute we should start seeing um, data coming from, we should see a balloon pop up here. I'm going to jump over to my tracker that I have set up here. And I'm not seeing anything just yet. But what we want to see over here, um, around 405.010, which could be this, looks like it's this one, so it looks like we're about to get some data here. Uh, as soon as we get some, let me check the log again here. All right, not seeing anything yet. Every so often it does a frequency scan. And some of these are just junk, you know, interference, stray noise, whatever. Um, but this is definitely one that we're, uh, we should be starting to get some data from pretty soon. Once it gets over this, uh, I guess this is a lot of, threshold or whatever they call it but we should start getting data now you can see it's detected peaks on and the peaks are identified with these orange dots um, but again a lot of this stuff is junk um, but this one should be hopefully popping up soon but let's go back to the overall map here see no one is there's there's multiple trackers see I'm over here in Champaign and um, let's see here. There's somebody near Peoria that's also tracking. And then there's a couple up here in northern Illinois. Um, but eventually, as you can see, a lot of balloons are going up now and being tracked all over the U.S. here, uh, which is pretty cool. So we'll just uh, stick around and wait it, wait for the, uh, the one out of Lincoln to pop up here. So we are starting to get... Uh, some data here or about to uh, as you can see it's found a uh, signal on 405.010 and now the decoder on this app is starting to receive a signal and this is normal when you first set this or when it first detects a signal you get this little error 
And now we've picked it up, and now we've got it on our map. I'm going to shut this off. This is our signal here. Let me shut this off so we have a bigger screen. And so you can see there's Lincoln right there, and now we're getting data. And here's our, here's our telemetry, as they call it. It's got the GPS location, the altitude. It's already at 11,000 feet now. Normally, I'll pick it up a little lower than that, but that's where we're at today. So what it does, this program, um, is it gets data every 15 or so seconds. It'll upload it to the Sonda Hub website. So if we go over there, boom, now we've got our balloon from Lincoln showing up on the map. And if you click on it, you'll get all the data over here gives you the frequency, the battery voltage on the, the balloon, um, the temperature right now it's minus 17 degrees Celsius. Um, as you can see, here's the information, that's my call sign, and the signal strength, and then the frequency I'm receiving it on. It's got the GPS location, the date and the time, and then the altitude, and then how fast it's going up or going down. So once the balloon bursts, it will, you know, this rate will go negative. And let me see here. Usually there's a predict, predicted track, and I'm not seeing that right now. I wonder if I accidentally shut that off here. I don't see it yet, but uh, usually it'll show like a, a track of where it potentially might land, the general area, but I don't see that yet, so... Um, we'll just kind of see where it goes here. You can get a prediction out of, let me see here. Well, if you, oh, here it is. If you click the actual launch site, which is Lincoln National Weather Service, um, you can click generate predictions, and then it'll come up with like 15 different options or something like that. And then you can kind of see, they're kind of all over the place because it doesn't know what the, upper level winds are other than wherever it got its data so uh, let me clear that out and as you can see the higher it goes the the bigger this range the circle gets which is you know the the more you can hear so pretty soon you're going to start seeing a couple of these other sites over here under received besides just me you're going to see some other call signs or other um ground stations as it were which is pretty cool because even you know even if you you live here somewhere here and you see you know my tracker and this these other trackers you're like oh well i'm not going to waste my time well it's good to have as many trackers as you can because if it lands if this balloon was to land you know south like decatur or way down here if somebody's down here, they're going to pick up the signal a lot better than I'm going to, especially with I've got an indoor antenna. So that's not going to, you know, it, it don't don't freak out if you already see a couple trackers here because you, you don't know their setup and, you know, the distance from the balloon. Once it, you know, once it drops below a certain altitude, you know, you're going to lose that signal unless you're like, you know, right next to where it's where it's dropped. So um, that's something you can, you know, don't get discouraged there. And eventually, once it gets close enough, um, you can even pick it up on a on an HT. Okay, so I've got my HT here. I've got it set to my the frequency of the balloon. And if I open the squelch, let's see what we get here. Not picking it up right now, but if I if I move next to the window, I'd probably hear it. But I'll give it a few minutes. Uh, as it gets closer, I should be able to pick it up easily with a, you know, just the HD antenna. Now another site um, that this that our program, not my program, but um, the program we installed, this uh, Radio Sonda Auto RX. Um, it uploads to Sonda Hub and to um, another site called uh, Radio Sondi, and it's similar. Um, you zoom in here, you can click on this, and then it'll 
kind of show you the current status and location and then you can click on the, the, the number up here and it'll open up a new uh, page and it'll show you let me see if I can zoom in here there we go uh, it shows you the current location now this one here we go <clears throat> This one, this yellow line is the predicted track, and it's got it going way over into Indiana, which I'll, I will lose signal well before it gets there because, um, as I said, I'm using an indoor antenna, and I usually get good coverage to the west, but once it gets a little bit of ways to the east, I don't, I don't pick up the signal very well. But it's got this first blue pin here as estimating that the balloon will burst somewhere um, yeah, almost near Frankfurt, Indiana. And then it's got it landing way over here somewhere near Fairmount, Indiana. So that's just a prediction. Um, and right now, I mean, we've got some pretty strong winds. So that's probably why. But, I mean, sometimes in the summertime, um, it'll land. I, I've seen it land, you know, across town, just outside of town here, and I get pretty good data. Um, let me go back here. So you can see our signal. I've still not seen anybody else picking this up yet, but I think once we get a little higher, right now we are at 19,000 feet, and I think once we get a little higher, A, we'll be able to hear it on the HT and indoors, what the signal sounds like, and then B, we'll start seeing some of these other stations picking up this signal, which is good because then you've got multiple stations. If you know it goes out of range of one, then you've got another one or two stations picking it up. Um, let me go back to my... I'm going to go away from our current... Let me shut the log off here. I'm going to go away from our current track. I'm going to go into historical. Um, let me see here as soon as it loads. So if I sort this by oh, last, I think that's the last, yeah. So let me pull up a couple of these here. I'm trying to think, oh, here. Yeah, I think this is what I want here. Let me scroll down. There should be some more. I wish it was, I don't know why it's showing me, whoops, I told it I wanted miles, but it's giving me kilometers, but if I come down here, I thought maybe it would show some closer, it's weird how it sorts it here, well, we'll just go with the 10 kilometer ones here, I'm going to plot those paths. It should just show me those. So yeah, see, I've had a couple here that have landed just outside of town. Like this one, we had it. We, we tracked it all the way to 816 feet altitude. I mean, that's pretty darn good, especially for an indoor antenna. And this one was just over 1,100 feet. So, you know, if you have the right antenna, you can track these things pretty pretty good. And if you got this, you know, if you got an ant outdoor antenna, you're, you're going to get a lot better <laughs> coverage and um, you're going to get these things lower to the ground than I'm getting them. Um, because usually I don't get any data from these. Um, you know, like that one, I didn't get the first signal until 12,000 feet. This one I had it at 7,900 feet. So that's that's not too bad for being an indoor antenna and it's... Um, I don't know how far away it is. I think it's about 50 miles or so. Oh, there it is. 54 miles or something. Yeah. So, you know, not too shabby for an indoor antenna. All right. So let's go back to the live, live look here. <laughs> and right now it's, you know, it's kind of going due east. So that's kind of cool. And we're still not getting anybody else tracking this. That's kind of shocking. We're at 22,000 feet. Um, if I go back here, um, yeah, I'm the only receiver so far. So 
Um, it's, this is kind of neat because it just updates the, the table of data here. So if you go back, the first, um, let's see, the first altitude was 3,500 meters. You know, I don't know the conversion of that. Let's just do a quick... Uh, Okay, so 11,630 feet, approximately, um, is when I first picked up the signal that where it could actually decode it. So at that point, you know, it's already minus 17 Celsius. I'm just going to use this as our... <laughs> Oops, minus 17 Celsius to Fahrenheit. So one degree Fahrenheit, pretty much. And then, you know, now we're, whoops, now we are at uh, minus 38 Celsius, and that gives us minus 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, it's, it's cold. It's cold the higher you go. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then it, it gives you the course you know, the direction it's going. And it's moving at a pretty good clip here. There went another, you know, 130 kilometers an hour. So if I do... You know, that's 80 miles an hour. That's <laughs> that's a lot faster than I've usually, I normally see. Um, let's go back to this one. So, yes, yeah, we're still the only ones picking this up. Um, we're at 20, almost 24,000 feet, so, and you can see if I zoom out, we're starting to, I mean, not my tracker, but other, other trackers out there are picking up all the surrounding. It's getting kind of messy on the map because just about every balloon is being tracked now. I don't know if there's anybody out here, uh, if this airport in this area that's tracking, besides, you know, I'm sure the weather service has their own. They they have their own tracking setup, but you know for for the hobbyist here, this is pretty cool. I think. Uh, all right, now you're starting to see the Davenport one show up. I'm gonna switch over to that one. That one's not coming from my receiver, though. Once in a while, um, once the Lincoln one is out of range, uh, my my tracker will pick this one up if it's high enough, or you know the signal's strong enough. Um, but I mean, obviously, if I had an outdoor antenna, I'm sure I would be able to pick up multiple balloons, you know. Um, you can't... Um, running one instance of this program, you're, you can only do one. It'll only pick up one. Um, but if you, if you added another dongle to the Raspberry Pi and ran another second instance of this, uh, you could track multiple balloons on two different frequencies at the same time. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't pick up the the uh, Davenport balloon very often to warrant putting up another, you know, SDR and doing all that right now. Again, if I had an outdoor antenna, it would be it would be more useful to do that. All right, let's go back to ours, and let's see. We're still the only one picking this up. That's very interesting. Okay, so here I guess this is the this is the predicted track. Thought it was a uh, different color line here, but they've got it bursting. It's you must be using the same predictions as the um, the other program, the other website, because it's got it bursting over Frankfurt and then somewhere way over here. Well, this one's expected to go a little further now. Now that it's getting data, I think it's processing that data and saying, hey, this these winds are a little faster than we were anticipating. You know, this may end up over here. But it, it really depends on where it, where that balloon pops. If it pops earlier, you know, it probably is not going to go as far. And it could change direction as well. All right, so let's go back to the HT. I'm starting to hear the squelch break a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and open the squelch here. And you can kind of hear the signal. If I turn it a little bit.
There it is. You hear, hear that signal? Let's get it. Oh yeah, it's starting to get louder now. And it's uh, 28,000 feet right now. And it's... Uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, it's just east of Clinton Lake, Clinton, Illinois. So as it gets higher, uh, we should start... Let's go over to our tracker here. Because we'll get a... You know, it should update every second on our local tracker, and then it uploads that data every, like, 15 seconds to the website, so. But you can kind of see the signal. And, you know, as it gets clo if it gets closer, it looks like it's trying to take a little bit of a north, an east-northeast path right now. But it's definitely getting stronger. And if we go back to our signal on the graph here, whoops, that's not what I want. Let me go back. If we go to our signal or scan plot, it's interesting. It's only showing it at. Uh, 20, 20 dB here. I figured it'd be a little, a little wider than that. Well, 22 dB here. Signal to noise. But yeah, I mean, you can pick this up on your, your you know, scanner, HT, whatever. You, know, you can't obviously decode it that way unless you feed it into a computer, but uh, I think the SDR is probably the way to go there. All right, now we are starting to see another station up here in Kankakee picking up uh, the signal as well. Now he's further away and only getting a 10 dB signal, uh, but what the balloon's around, let's see, 30, 33,000 feet, and my signal's a lot stronger because obviously it's closer to me than it is that one up there in Kankakee. So, um, but as it's as it continues to rise, see he's dropped out here. Um, but as this continues to go up higher in the atmosphere, um, it, this station will get a lot. You can see it's kind of right on the edge of that radius circle there. So as it gets higher, this one will, now it's popping back in. See, it's right on the edge there. It's only 8 dB um, where they're at. But for me, it is really strong at 24 dB. So um, it's, it's really cool that, you know, height does matter in these... Uh, VHF UHF signals so just a quick update um, I looked at the data from last night um, which was the balloon I was tracking and it looks like um, if I zoom in this is from my station it burst um, at 106,000 feet just north of Frankfurt Indiana so that matches with what we were seeing on the predictions and then my last observed was right after that um, when it hit 103,000 feet. So, you know, I was way out of range of my indoor antenna. Um, if we go to the Sandy Hub website, uh, we can see the, the other person that was tracking um, pretty much lost it shortly after I did. Uh, so we really don't know. There, there aren't any trackers. This one apparently didn't pick it up. So there's not enough trackers in this in Indiana, it looks like. Um, to know exactly where that balloon landed. So I thought that was kind of neat um, just to follow up on the one we were tracking. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, this is kind of a longer video for me. Uh, so if you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments and I'll do my best to, to answer them. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. 73. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and make sure to ding my bell to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again and 73 from K9SWX.